Hey everyone, Dan here. Today I'm really excited to finally uh, properly unveil this, uh, this teletype sequencer I've made called Minim. It works with the Monom grid and it's sort of a guitar-like in a way because you have a, you have a chord sequencer on the left, you have an arpeggiator on the right, there's a lot of playability uh, layered on top of that. Uh, we're going to set up a little demo here and just kind of jam out for a bit so you get a feel for it. But what you'll notice is the playheads here. Uh, they go from top to bottom, and these are the looping points for each side, right? So this is the, the chord loop here, and this is the arpeggio loop. I'm just going to kind of bounce around, just improvise, see what happens. It's not going to sound great, but you'll get the idea. And then we'll break it all down, and uh, and I'll show you how to patch things up and, and some more advanced features that are kind of hidden in here. All right, let's talk about the inputs and outputs that we used in that patch. Um, CV1 through 3 here uh, are the chord outputs from the left side. They were going into a chainsaw, and the arpeggio here on the right is CV4. That was going into quadrax in my example. So when you send a trigger into TR1 here, it, it advances the step, and it sends a trigger out on TR1. Same thing here on the right side. A trigger into TR3 comes out on TR3 down here. And so I'm using those to go to like a VCA filter or whatever uh, to, uh, to gate the notes. All right, let's talk about some sequencing basics. So as I mentioned before, you set your loop links, your start and end points uh, using these columns. This is uh, for the chord column for the uh, arpeggiator column. Uh, you can just choose a single step just by clicking on that. Um, one kind of cool feature here is that these are quantized, which means that it will always complete one loop before it jumps to the next one. And you'll see these kind of dimly illuminated sections. It sort of uh, progresses through to let you know, hey, uh, I can't jump to this new loop yet. I have to finish playing this one first before I get there. This is really cool because you can sort of like queue up changes. You know, you can move to like a little bridge section, kind of set some new chords there, whatever, rearrange your chords in the original loop, and then you can uh, come back through when you're done. This works on both sides as well. All right, so I've stopped the clock, and um, I want to show you what, what we're actually doing when we, when we uh, press these buttons. So these are chord degrees. It's basically one through seven. Those chords get passed out directly to um, these three outputs, CV1 through 3, as a basic triad. 
They also get passed on to the right side where the arpeggiator picks it up and plays the chord component. So that's like, uh, if this were, you know, in, in the key of C major, it would be like C, E, G, B, uh, and then one octave up, C, E, G. Pretty simple, right? So choose the chord. Let's look at some other features. Um, you, you're not stuck to, with just the major scale. Um, you can go through and use this param knob to change that. Uh, there are like nine different scales, so. And then you can also, you can use the CVN here um, to change the spread of the notes in that chord section. It doesn't do anything to the arpeggiator, just the just the, the uh, chord section. So I have uh, five volts here that I can send in and that'll change the CVN value. It can't accept up to 10 volts, but the spread gets so crazy high, it's it's kind of, kind of insane. Uh, so let me show you what that sounds like. So if you notice, there was some weird stuff happening with the arpeggio section uh, in our in our jam earlier. A lot of it has to do with a reset function that's built in here. And if you send a reset into uh, input two, it will uh, reset the arpeggio to the very first step, even if that is outside of the designated loop area. Um, let's go through. I'm just going to manually reset it. Hopefully, you can kind of see what's going on, and we'll um, we'll kind of stop it. Explain. In a little more detail. So the um, the most obvious use case for this is to keep the arpeggio and the chord section in sync. So. Uh, what I actually had going on was uh, a stackable so that every time the chord resets, it would reset to the first beat here. Um, just punch in two chords so you can hopefully hear that a little better. I'll change this up too. So every time you hear that high pitched uh, noise, that's the reset occurring. <laughs> And uh, of course, you probably noticed there that when I say it resets the loop, it, it really resets it to the very first step, even if that's not where your designated loop is. So you can use that to pretty interesting effect to kind of extend your sequence, uh, kind of bump it out of there. You'll also notice it does the same thing where it kind of highlights, hey, I have to play through all this area here before I get back to the loop. So that's what these kind of dimly lit things indicate. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You just got to play around it. It's pretty weird, but I, I think it's a neat feature. There's one more feature that is maybe one of the more oddball um, uh, features on, on Minim, which is the, uh, the live playability of steps. So when you're on a step and you, um, you make a change, you'll notice that it outputs a trigger on output two for the left side and output four for the right side. And uh, what that means is, well, if we plug into two and four, uh, you get something like this. So there's like a little kind of mini keyboard in here, and that allows you to kind of add uh, embellishments to the chord progression or to the arpeggio. Now this isn't useful in every case, um, but when it is, it is, it is pretty cool. Um, what you can do actually is um, you can combine triggers one and two using a stackable or molt or, or a combiner. Uh, 
and three and four. And that way you get a trigger when the step advances or when you make a, a, a change. Um, I don't know, this is probably going to sound like garbage, but let's, <laughs> let's see what happens. So you get the point. Not, not great with these like pad kind of sounds, but if you have like, if you're sending this through an arpeggiator or doing strumming type stuff, um, there's some pretty pretty cool uh, things you can do there. Maybe I'll show that in a later video. The arpeggiator section is like pretty hard to do when it's going really fast. I'm actually not even gonna try that. But you know, what you, what you can do is, um, if you slow down the arpeggiator section, it doesn't have to be an arpeggiator. It can also be like a, um, it can be kind of like a melody generator. And so you can embellish those melodies. I'm gonna see if this works here. <laughs> okay, remember that reset? The reset is preventing it from changing from this stuff. God, I love this thing. So you get the idea. Um, this could be removed, by the way. It's it's pretty pretty trivial. I figure it was easier to add it in and have it than to try to squeeze it in later. Uh, but I, I think it's really fun. If you want to give the sequencer a try, check out the uh, description, the video description, where I'll have the latest on where to go to download it. Um, there's also there's a cheat sheet if you're loading the scene and scroll down. I'll give you some reminders there about what all the inputs and outputs are. Uh, feel free to take this and modify it, you know, maybe throw me some credit. And hey, if you use this, uh, make any videos or anything with it, um, let me know. I'd like, to, I'd like to hear. Maybe I can put together a little YouTube playlist for us or something like that. And um, finally, thank you to Monome for making these, these wonderful inspirational tools. I'm just uh, head over heels in love with Teletype and, and Grid. You know, I bounced off it. Uh, at first, but coming back to it after like a six month break, I'm just, I'm just in love with it too. I think it's, it's a great, great tool and it's been a really fun project. So, uh, more to come. Stay tuned. Uh, give me a, a like and subscribe if you're into this stuff, y'all. Um, I'll catch you next time.